the reason why I ask the question, is religion inherently conservative, progressive, or revolutionary, um, is because I think especially among our European friends, um, there is this tendency to view American religion as uh, peculiarly conservative. Um, and that is in large part because of the publicity that the Christian right uh, began achieving uh, starting uh, in the late 1970s with uh, people like Pat Robertson and Jerry Falwell and the important role, and it was an important role, that religious conservatives played uh, in uh, electing Ronald Reagan in 1980. Um, and so I think it's very important to look back uh, at the trajectory of religion, and it's, again, I emphasize evangelical religion only because it's associated so much with conservatism, with political conservatism now, um, to say that the um, history is quite different uh, than that. Uh, if you look at our anti-slavery movement, the great stain on American life was racism and slavery, and it's a struggle we have had uh, for, from the very beginning of our country, it's something with which we still struggle. I argue that in some ways we have at least the advantage over other nations that we've been at this problem longer than most societies because we committed this original sin, and I think we struggle with it more than most societies, but it is our original sin. And when you go back and look at who mobilized people against slavery, who were the first people to come along uh, in our politics and say this is morally wrong. Not that we should compromise with it, not that maybe we should extinguish it gradually, but we must repeal this. The anti-slavery movement came in significant part out of the evangelical movement in America and out of the conversion of evangelicals, uh, the, the rise of evangelicals and a lot of individual conversions in the 1820s uh, and 1830s. Um, these, the evangelical movement then became linked, and, and this is particularly the evangelical movement in the North. Uh, and I think in understanding American religion, it's always important to understand the split between the North and South that created, caused a civil war uh, in our country. Um, these same evangelicals uh, were in favor of ending imprisonment for debt. They were in favor of creating asylums for the mentally ill instead of mistreating the mentally ill. They were in favor of establishing a rigorous uh, public school system. Um, so to a very large degree, the evangelicals were the progressives uh, in American politics. Jump forward to what we call our progressive era, uh, Presidents Teddy Roosevelt and Woodrow Wilson, whom Rob uh, referenced. Um, the, a lot of the people who became partisans in the progressive movement uh, were people who went into America's slums in the 1880s and 1890s, people like Jane Addams, uh, for religious reasons. Um, and they were trying to help people one on one on one. Uh, and um, they became progressive uh, because they, over time, while they honored the one-on-one -on -one work uh, they were doing, uh, they also realized that only structural change in the society, in the economy, would actually uh, lift uh, folks uh, up. Uh, jump further still to our civil rights movement. Uh, um, the, uh, if you look at all of the surveys, uh, in, uh, in the, the following is a defensible statement, that African Americans are the most religious people in America. There are other people who are religious, but if you take, uh, there are many, many non-African Americans who are very religious, but the African American community um, is uh, very religious. If you think about the preaching of Martin Luther King, uh, the reason why I think he was a successful leader beyond a genius for tactics and the way in which nonviolence played so brilliantly into a media age uh, to see uh, innocent demonstrators uh, who are being nonviolent beaten by white policemen energize the country. But I think at a theoretical level, the reason he converted people, if I may use that word, uh, was his fluency with the two key religious documents in the United States, one being the Bible and the other being our Declaration of Independence. The other thing I want to close with is something that uh, I've been talking about a lot uh, in relation to my book. I really believe that we Americans are under uh, stating to ourselves uh, the importance of our own communitarian uh, tradition, the side of ourselves that is not uh, radically individualistic, that is not Clint Eastwood. Uh, I think that Americans actually are very confusing to ourselves as well uh, as to you. I mean, 
We produce movies like It's a Wonderful Life, which some of you may have seen, the great Jimmy Stewart Christmas movie that's all about community. And we produce Dirty Harry. We produce writers like John Steinbeck, uh, which is all about social justice and community. And we produce writers like Jack Kerouac, which is all about individualism and individual uh, adventure. Um, and so we are confusing people. Um, and yet, and, but I think that right now, our tendency is to uh, focus far more on um, uh, individualism and losing our gift for community. So what I want to close on is to link two uh, very unlikely uh, characters for you. Um, I want to link um, Bruce Springsteen uh, with John Winthrop, one of the Puritan founders of America. Now you may ask, what do Bruce Springsteen and John Winthrop uh, have, could possibly have in common. Uh, uh, how, much, how many people here are actually fans of Springsteen? I've always wondered if it's a peculiarly American taste. No. Uh, oh, that's very good. That's a, that's a pretty good percentage. How many people know who Bruce Springsteen is? Let's try that. OK. Um, the, um, I, the, the, um, so who's my Puritan? My Puritan is a man called John Winthrop, uh, who many of you remember, or those of you who are older remember, uh, Ronald Reagan always referring to the United States as a shining city on a hill. Um, that came from a sermon by John Winthrop, one of the founders, early governor of Massachusetts, a sermon he gave in 1630 uh, called A Model of Christian Charity. Uh, and uh, I just want to share one line from that sermon. He said, we must delight in each other, make others' conditions our own, uh, rejoice together, mourn together, labor and suffer together, always having before our eyes our community as members of the same body. Uh, sounds something straight out of St. Paul, actually. We are all part of one another. Um, now, that's the Puritan. What, what does Springsteen have to do with this? For those of you who are true fans, that handful of you, um, you will know that one of his most, the new popular hit that he has put out as part of his new album, uh, you will now hear it on the Obama campaign. He has started playing this uh, at his rallies. Uh, and the refrain of the song is, wherever this flag is flown, he's talking about the American flag, wherever this flag is flown, we take care of our own. Uh, and I do believe there is a trajectory from John Winthrop uh, to Bruce Springsteen, and I do believe that this uh, communitarian spirit um, is one of the very best things about us, uh, that we ought to talk about it more, but even more, we ought to practice it more. And I want to close where I started to thank uh, the Nexus Institute. Um, what I sort of really appreciate about what Rob does, and what I appreciate that all of you would come out and have a conversation uh, like this, is what I said at the beginning, that if we care about preserving societies that value freedom, equality, community, um, uh, we're not going to preserve those societies uh, if we don't think about the meaning of those things, we, if we don't think about where uh, they came from, if we don't root them in something more than our own personal preferences. Because these aren't personal preferences alone. Uh, these are fundamental principles that we want a whole society uh, to live by. Uh, and I want to salute you all for putting up with me uh, for all this time uh, and for uh, caring enough or having teachers who care enough uh, that you are willing to engage in this uh, kind of discussion. Uh, and it's a dangerous invitation, but if any of you are ever in the United States, please give me a call. Uh, thank you very, very much. <laughs>